Uh, a great home going. Second Timothy four, five and eight. Second Timothy four, five and eight. Uh, homecoming is about going home. We go back to the place where it all began. We go home. I love holidays uh, when we can gather in our homes and enjoy fellowship one with another. We are only visiting, though we haven't come to stay. They say you can't go home again, meaning you can't recapture that feeling you had as a child. You can't have it all, they say. But I say that we can have it all, and we are going home one day to our real home. And we're going to be arrayed with rewards. We're going to stay, and we can have it all then. Prepare to go home. Paul wanted Timothy to always be ready to be heading home. When you have a loved one who's sick, you always have a suitcase packed and ready to go to the hospital. Some, uh, same thing here. We're always ready to go home and be with the Lord. 2 Timothy 4, 5 says, But watch thou in all things. But watch thou in all things. You must keep control of yourself in all circumstances. But as for you, be clear-headed in every situation. Stay calm, cool, and steady. Just like Ronnie when he sings. <laughs> calm, cool, and collected. Wasn't there a deodorant like that? Uh, back in the day? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ronnie has a lot of that. I mean, we, we must always be guarding our lives and our faith so we don't get entangled with sin. 2 Peter 2.20 For if, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world to the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and they are entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. We can get entangled. But watch thou in all things. Keep watch over your spiritual life. Prepare to go home and be with the Lord. We should be doing that every day of our lives. Preparing. Because one day we're going to meet Him in the air Amen. or in death. I prefer the air. You know, I'm afraid of heights, but I still prefer that. Second Timothy 4, 5 continues. Endure afflictions. Endure suffering. Every hardship. There are hardships in the Christian life. There is suffering in the Christian life. Andrew Brunson, after two years of captivity from Indiana, was pastoring a church uh, in Turkey Amen. for 20 years. Got home yesterday. Praise God. We've been Amen. praying for him. He endured suffering and affliction. We don't know what the Christians in these Muslim countries are going through. You in your own life have endured sufferings. 2 Timothy 2 3 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You guys that are in the military and soldiers, you know, it's hard at times. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult. But you keep on. You don't tear off the uniform and say, I quit. You keep going. Yeah. Psalm, I know you want to. <laughs> Uncle Sam won't let you, will he? Uh, Psalm 34, 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of just a few of them. All. All. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. The Bible tells us it's going to have many afflictions. The devil's after you. People hate you. There's haters of the Christian life. But the Lord delivered them out of them out of them all. Last week, Henry and Debbie and Kelly and Sharon and I went to the Ark Encounter and the uh, Creation Museum. And critics say, "Oh, nobody goes there anymore. They're struggling financially." We couldn't even get a place to park. Well, plenty of park places, but no place to eat. It was jam packed. Jam packed. And I've told. Everybody I said, hmm, I thought they were having financial problems. I think they were doing really well. And I gave them my hard-earned money. I bought two t-shirts for $14.99 each, which is not bad for a place like that. You go to Gatlinburg and get the same t-shirts, it's going to cost you $40. Yeah. Two t-shirts, $14.99. They're not trying to gouge people. But God has blessed it. Uh, and it took a lot of work to crit criticize them and blast them. Them. Won't let schools, some superintendents will not let their children go to the Ark Encounter or the uh, Creation Museum and only classes should go. They are allowed to go if you go 
not for religious reasons, but to have a education, educational right. purposes. Amen. Children are allowed to go, but superintendents are scared to death. Uh, but I saw no protesters there. Everything was great. Happy people. All <laughs> the people that waited on you were happy, and it was full of Christians. And I was very impressed Amen. that a place full of Christians, we didn't talk to each other much. We scared each other. <laughs> <laughs> but we were happy to be where we're at. And let me tell you, Christians use their cameras. Everybody was taking pictures of everything and you had to wait till somebody I got a little aggravated. <laughs> these they're not Baptists. Baptists are in a hurry to do everything. <laughs> so these must have been some other denomination. I was gonna ask these like, who are you? Because you're filming everything and she wanted to stand back, nobody could pass by. You have to wait. <laughs> Tell them. And she said, I take pictures of all the displays so I can go home and read them. Makes sense. Makes sense. But why don't you come in at the end of the day when there's nobody here? So. <laughs> 2 Timothy 2.15 says, uh, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. 2 Timothy 4 5 continues, Do the work of an evangelist. Study to show thyself approved. 2 Timothy 2.15. Do the work of evangelists. It means to preach the gospel. We're to preach the gospel, and the related noun gospel are used throughout the New Testament, not only in relation to evangelists, but also that's the call of every Christian, especially preachers and teachers, to proclaim the gospel. Paul did not call Timothy to the office of evangelists. You know, there's an office, there's a gift of evangelism, but to, to, the, to do the work of one. Do the work of an evangelist. All of us must do the work of evangelism, a preacher of the good news. All of us are preachers of the gospel. By the way you live, places you go, and the words you say. Ephesians 4.11, And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. We are all called to be full-time evangelists. You know, Ray Comfort has that great ministry of uh, that he does. Some of you may have heard of him or he uses the Ten Commandments and goes and street preaches. He has the gift of evangelism. He's so smart in arguments and things. I can't think that fast. And, and he's very good. He's been gifted by God with the gift of evangelism. But we're all called to share our faith. We can all do the work of an evangelist. That is to tell others clearly and distinctly how to be saved. And to be able to tell people clearly and distinctly, you need to know the plan of salvation as much as you know your own name. And as we get older, that's difficult, right? But we can do it. 2 Timothy 4, 5, Make full proof of thy ministry. Perform your whole duty as a servant of God. Fulfill the duties of your ministry. Finish, this basically means, finish the work that God has given you to do. Cross the finish line. Verse 9, 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may win, that you may obtain, that you may win. We're to finish the race for Christ. Minister means to attend to, to someone's need. Make full proof of that ministry. The greatest need everyone has is to hear the Word of God and the Gospel of Jesus Christ and to be saved. Our greatest need is to be saved by the Lord Jesus Christ from our sins. Mm -hmm. Acts 6 4, but we will give ourselves continue to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. When you're getting ready to go home, you make preparations. If you've been in the hospital for a while, people prepare the home for you to, to be comfortable when you get there. When you've been on a trip, you pack it up and get ready to head home. You prepare, you get everything ready for the trip. If you're going home for the holidays, you pack a suitcase, get the car ready, get the kids ready, and off you go. We should be preparing to go to our heavenly home mm -hmm. by watching our lives, enduring all hardships, preaching the gospel, and finishing the race. Don't quit on Jesus as many Christians are doing today. They're quitting on Jesus. Well, He's at the brink of coming yeah. to get His church. That's right. And Christians are quitting. I don't have time. I don't have the desire let me tell you, this is the worst possible time in history yeah. to quit on Jesus. 
because he's coming to get his church. Yep. I'm not going to go into all the signs, but you can go to our website and you can go to YouTube. And after you hear Ronnie sing, I hope it. My little microphone is his phone is missing, Ronnie. I don't know what happened to it. When I got in this morning, his mic was all out of whack. I don't know if it recorded anything or not. I don't know where my little microphone is. I'm hanging out here. It's a little pale mic. I don't know, Janelle, if it's recording or not. It is. Okay. Good. So, we prepare to go home. And after you hear Ronnie sing, you can listen to some of the sermons I preach on Jesus' return. Because he's returning to get his church. Amen. And all, everything's ready. Romans 1 tells us reprobate minds will, will take place. And let me tell you, yeah. people's mm -hmm. gone crazy. Yeah, yeah. People have lost their minds and common sense. Mm -hmm. Prepare to go home. Secondly, ready to go home. 2 Timothy 4, 6, For I am now ready to be offered. As for me, the hour has come for me to be sacrificed, Paul is saying. For I am ready to be poured out as a drink offering to the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 24, 44 says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. And that's where people are today. They are thinking not. They've lost their cotton-picking mind. <laughs> Second Timothy 4, 6 continues, at the time, And the time of my departure is at hand. The time is here for me to leave this life, and the time of my departure from this world. And I will soon go free, Paul is saying. Genesis 27, 2, He said, Behold, now I am old, I know not the day of my death. Hebrews 9, 27, As, that, as it is appointed to a man once to die, but after this, the judgment. We have an appointment with death or with Jesus at the rapture. Yeah. One of them is for sure. Well, both of them are for sure if you live long, long enough. Uh, Jesus will come and get his church in my lifetime, I pray. I hope and pray. <laughs> uh, but we're all going to face death. 2 Timothy 4, 7, I fought a good fight. I fought a good fight. I've done my best. I fought the good and worthy and noble fight of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Timothy 6 tells us to fight the good fight of faith. Have you fought a good fight? Are you ready to go home? Have you fought for the Lord Jesus Christ? Not perfect. It doesn't say did you live a perfect life. But have you continued to fight? You know, soldiers lose a few battles, win a few battles. But they keep fighting. They don't quit. That's the thing I want to leave with you today. If you're getting ready to go home with Jesus, <clears throat> fight till the end. Don't quit on him. Don't quit like many do. Uh, I finished my course. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've run the full distance. I have finished the race. John 17 says, I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Jesus finished the work of that God gave him to do, the task he gave him to do, which was to die for our sins on the cross, the cruel cross of Calvary. We should follow his example. We should finish strong for the Lord. So many falter at the finish. So many quit when they're so near the finish line. Many start celebrating too early. Have you seen those pictures of guys in races and they start to celebrate just before they get to the break through the tape? And somebody beats them. And they want to be. <laughs> Don't quit too early. Yeah. Run through the tape. Finish the course. Don't start celebrating. I love it when they start celebrating like jerks and get beat. <laughs> Don't you love it when Duke, Duke celebrates like jerks and then they get beat on the last second three? <laughs> I love that. That's what I like about the country. You're a Duke fan? Too bad. <laughs> uh, that's a character flaw, I call it. You know, a New York Yankee fan and a Duke fan is a character flaw. We need to have help. Seventeen four. Cowboys are fine. Robert yeah. Starback. I grew up on Robert Starback. He's great. Great Christian man too. John 17, 4. I have glorified thee on the earth and have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Have you finished the work? No, because you have, haven't left yet. Jack, how long are you going to preach until the Lord calls me home? This is a job you don't retire from. Unless He moves me on and 
takes away my voice. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end, which means a good end. So many have started out well in the faith, but have shipwrecked their faith. We looked at Noah's Ark. Amazing that it didn't shipwreck. It was built just perfectly for the turbulent waters of the flood. But it didn't wreck. 1 Timothy 1 says, Holy faith and a good conscience which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck of whom as Hymenaeus and Alexander who are to deliver them to Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme. 2 Timothy 2, And their word will eat as doth a canker of whom as Hymenaeus and Philetus. This Hymenaeus guy is a bad dude, isn't it? Twice he's mentioned in the Bible. Who concerning the truth have error, saying that the resurrection has already happened and overthrow the faith of some. They believe Jesus had a spiritual resurrection, not bodily resurrection. Listen. It's bad to quit on the Lord, but to turn and preach falsely and teach falsely is bad for you. If you trusted Jesus Christ, you're going to heaven. But boy, you're going to get in there like the Bible describes with your coattails burning. You just escaped hell by the grace of God. 2 Timothy 4 said, I have kept the faith, the faith. There's only one faith, and that's faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Amen. I have firmly guarded the gospel against error, Paul said. That's our job as pastors. That's your job as a believer in Jesus Christ to protect and guard the faith. Matthew 25, his Lord said unto, unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, I will make thee rule over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. You know what I think these people were faithful in the building? Keeping the faith. Being true to the faith. They didn't fall for fables and tales and flamboyant creatures with fancy hair. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> Colossians chapter 1. I don't care if I have fancy hair. I just want hair. <laughs> I don't have a nice head like Jamie. He's got such a nice head. <laughs> Mine is oblong and oval, oval and, and then the many years of bending over, picking up a package and hitting my head. 